groups? Yeah, so we we took over a parent our flock when we when we <coughs> took over the farm, so it was eight years ago. So this is Pearl, Millie's pet from years ago, and she has the same birthday as Millie, which is today, and she's had a lamb. So her and her lamb and Millie all have the same birthday. <laughs> How do you feel about that? It's so cool, and on my birthday! Yeah? <laughs> Good girl, Pearl. All the lambs are pretty good this morning. Um, yes, there's two singles that we drove that we uh, shed off. So Millie's pretty excited that one of her pets has had a lamb on the, her birthday, same as the yeah, same as the lamb they used birthday. So that was pretty cool. A um, couple of jobs just to tick off here before I head to Lincoln. So we're meant to have those hundred odd Lincoln students here um, today, but then yeah, I talked to them last night or talked to the lecturer and we, we canned it um, for them coming out. So they can't couldn't really postpone it. So um, what we've decided to do is I'll shoot into Lincoln and then uh, use one of the lecture theatres and then we'll just go through a steal of all that. Uh, good thing about having all that stuff on YouTube is they can easily go and have a look at those videos and um, uh, yeah, kind of get a gauge on the farm of what we do. Um, so yeah, just got to feed these calves on the fodder beat here. Just, um, I fed their break yesterday so they'll be all right there, but just feeding them some baleage. Um, Try not to make everything too mucky, muddy, but uh, kind of can't get away from it at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, we'll unwrap this and uh, chuck some baleage in the feeder for them. Right, got the silage wagon all hooked up, ready for um, go down to the lease block after I get back from Lincoln to uh, feed the uh, feed the cattle down there. Got to do a bit of maintenance on it. Maintenance on it. It's the first time we've used it this winter, so um, yeah, I'll we'll get ready and uh, might see you down at Lincoln. Yeah, as you heard, I'm Alice Bird. Uh, we don't actually own the farm, we'll you know, straighten that out. Uh, yeah. So we lease it off my in-laws family trust. So, uh, yeah, uh, just a partnership for me and my wife here. Um, so we own plant and stock and do all the maintenance um, and then working with the family trust for development. Um, yeah. They're, they're pretty good, they're pretty hands off, so they yeah. give us pretty free grain on it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're 560 hectares here on the grain, so the hill block, um, sheep beef. We range from at the bottom there, so which will be the right hand side, from about 250 odd metres to the left hand side, top left corner, to about 880 metres of sea level, um, hence why we're in the snow at the moment. Um, so our cropping program probably used to revolve around fodder beet. Um, it's the purple, purple bit. Yep. Where this year we've only got four hectares, and then going forward we don't know whether that'll fit into our plan or not. Cows, all Angus cows, um, and we just sold our only year of the bull the other day, so all Angus bulls. So yeah, so they start calving first of September. The ewes, yeah, so we we took over a parent our flock when we when we <coughs> took over the farm, so it was eight years ago. So we've slowly been introducing some Texel and then currently some Kelso, so which is uh, a composite breed from the Hawks Bay. So everything from, from this fence line here, flowing this way, is the top of the Cust River, which then flows all the way down, so through Cust, through all the lifestyle blocks near Angara and comes out in the Kaipoi River. And then the other catchment we've got is from, from this fence line, um, all of that country comes out of the creek uh, just here, and that runs into the Eyre River, which is a 
kind of a traditional Kinnagree Lowland River that goes dry in the summer. Long term, what do you want to be doing? Uh, still farming on here. Still farming. <laughs> so it was 17 years ago that I was sitting in the same lecture theatre uh, in Lincoln, probably hearing the same stuff. Just didn't think I would be back there uh, up in front of them, but um, that was pretty cool. Hopefully they have all the information and do us a yeah, can do a fresh water farm plan and come up with some new ideas and think of some things that we've we haven't thought of. Um, just got to shoot past um, Wrightsons here in Darfield and grab some more lambering st supplies. So um, yeah, then it's uh, back home, keep feeding out. Need some of that, the lambing shed. So they didn't have everything I wanted at Wrightson, so we'll go to Farmlands. And it's hailing, snowing, grappling, whatever it is. That's what I want. So I got this wagon all greased up, oiled up, well, tires pumped up, got a bale in here, so we'll head down to the lease block and uh, feed the kettle down there. Still trying to snow, so. Morning, doing uh, bringing the hobbits in. Yeah, yeah. Just down the least block. Just got these hobbits, and they're going on a truck back home about 11 o'clock. So get them in, get them in the yard, and let them move the yard a wee bit. Sit down! Sit down! Blue! boys go on in your hop sit Alfie <coughs> Alfie will I go will I go will I go outside go and get up they're in there they're fine go and get up go and get up good boys Right, we'll leave these here until, yeah, so till, till the truck comes, till it's time to load them up. So just stepping over this break down here for the uh, single bearing uh, hues, the lambing. We've got a couple of new lambs over here that we have to shoot off after I finish this. But yeah, it's good with the uh, real crappy weather that we've had, these girls have done really, really well, so. Hopefully that continues with all of the uh, huge down here. Made a mistake. I shifted the brake before I shed these off. Now all she wants to do is go back with her mates and eat some food. <laughs> so I might have to leave it till tomorrow. Now my human dogs have been trained to shed like this. So one thing I need to do. Look at 
Oh, that was a success. We might leave the other one till tomorrow. So, right, truck's here. We'll uh, start loading these up. Let's throw our time lapse on. Oh, she's warm work, but more loaded up. But yeah, they certainly don't like squishing together when they're wet like that and full fleece. So we've got them on there, and uh, yeah, we'll meet, meet the truck at home. Wait for him to take you out of here, and we'll load the, uh, lower this loading ramp down so the wind doesn't take off with it. There we go, got through the drains, so it's good. Unloaded, all the hoggets are home. So yeah, well, I was, I was gonna vaccinate them, but um, just with the way the weather is at the moment, and the wet and uh, the yard is so blooming mucky, I was just gonna um, let them out onto their rafno um, and then bring them in to see what the weather does in the next week or so, and bring them in when we get a chance. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go have some lunch, and then uh, you're gonna fence off where that tree fell over. And I'll go. I'll show you the rafno and and uh, yeah, explain this. But I think it's two ninety nine, so nearly three hundred in this mob. Yeah, we've got our fence set up, just um, fencing off the where the tree came over there. And um, yeah, this stuff's rafno, so mixed between kale and radish. Just in the yards, checking over these hoggets. I'll notice one had been boarded, um, so I just marked her. We'll pull her out for thing. Probably, yeah, just change of feed or running them around through the yards for scanning or something, so it's a bugger. Right, we'll uh, let them off on to the rest now. They can just wander there while I do some other jobs. Shifting the fodder beat for these um, yelling heifers. They all look pretty good. But um, yeah, we're getting down towards the end of the actual fodder beat in this paddock. Um, so yeah, we might start opening them up a bit. And then once we get down this end and they graze all of this grass, then they can go and start grazing the what was the original runoff paddock. Start grazing that back. But, yep, plenty of baleage, plenty of snow on the hill. <laughs> and very wet. So it's Tuesday. Uh, it means it's uh, plate meter day checking the pasture cages for uh, all the sheep milking that we're doing. Uh, sheep milking uh, areas that we're leasing to the to them for lambing. So we'll um, flip this on, measure under this cage and then shift it, measure under where it's gonna go new. So we'll get a growth rate of grass and we get how much they've eaten. Uh, something interesting to note is last week, um, the tall fescue, so that's what this stuff is, was only growing about two or three kilos a day where the Italian or the ryegrass was growing around 20. 
So I put that down to um, last week it was quite warm, so soil temperatures were a bit high. So um, ryegrass grows on soil temperature, um, or ear temperature as well, and then um, the tall fescue grows on um, daylight hours. So uh, normally it's about the 15th of August that really starts to kick away. That's when the daylight hours increase enough for it to really uh, start. So just pulled down a fence for the in cow feathers we've got here. It's just so frustrating. Everything's just got a perfectly good grass paddock and just gets turned to trash. So yeah, very frustrating. Um, I must put them on daily breaks. But still, I think they're still going to make a hell of a mess. Just I don't know where for them. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you hit your annual rainfall seven months into the year. So just putting these um, values into Excel spreadsheet, interesting to note, um, pasture growth rate, tall fescue did 18 kilos, but that had a bit more cover on it, so grass goes grass. Um, yeah, a few of them just stood still, and one paddock did uh, 16 kilos, that was uh, ryegrass. Uh, yeah, sorry, first one was tall fescue. And they've been consuming um, last week they consumed 3,644 kilos of dry matter and the week before they consumed 3,700 so fairly well even. So just loaded up a couple of baleage bales, going to go feed the beef cows on the hill uh, just because the snow um, has, yeah, meant that I can't shift them as much so we we'll feed them in a whole paddock and then open them up to another hill paddock. Um, one thing that's been in the media in New Zealand just over the last uh, week or so is um, a dairy farm, big kind of corporate, Naitahu, um, here in Canterbury, or in the Waimak actually just down the road, uh, doing a trial between uh, conventional dairying and regenerative dairying. So it came out today that um, what they class as regenerative is actually just a lower input system, um, so longer rotation length, um, less synthetic nitrogen, so more organic um, forms of fertiliser and uh, a more diverse pasture species. So it'd be really, really interesting to get your thoughts on uh, what Regen Ag is and um, yeah, is it something new or is it something our forebears have done in the past and some of us actually continue to do. So um, my argument is what they're planning to do is really nothing different than what a sheep beef farm does anyway. So we limit our amount of nitrogen we use. We uh, we pretty much stock our farms to the, the amount of grass that we can grow uh, without using a huge excess amount of fertilizer as opposed to getting a stocking rate and then trying to meet that animal demand by using fertilizer. So, um, and then, you know, we use huge amounts of uh, different pasture species and stuff as I was showing you in the past few videos, or well, videos over the last year. Um, yeah, so drop us a comment, leave, uh, leave your thoughts. I'd love to, yeah, if you made it this far through the video, I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on what Regen Egg actually is. So, right, we'll shoot up here and feed these cows. There we go, cows are fed. They're all in here in the old skid site. Um, so we'll shoot up, shut the gate, and uh, yeah, getting close to ticking all the jobs off for today. Still snow up there though. Quick check on these little fellas in here. One, two, three, all good there. There we go, one, one under the heat lamp. These ones sitting by the feeder. I'm pretty happy. The heat wave's going really well. Yeah, a few teething issues, um, but yeah, we're getting there. Oh, so buddy. Oh, you're hungry now. Now that I've woken you up. And um, PTG Wrightson's just came and dropped off uh, the milk powder that we ordered. So, um, yeah, 1.8 ton of 20 kilo bags. There's a few dollars sitting here. There you go. Max Care um, Lamb and Kid Milk Replacer. Oh yeah. 
it'll be really good. So thanks guys for dropping that off. Um, yeah, we're starting to get into it now. All right, we're going to shut these hoggets away. And then pretty much be it for today. Just dropped off a salt block in here with uh, Rafno for the hoggets. So yeah, they'll be pretty happy in here for um, yeah, for a bit. And then when the weather dries up, we'll, um, or finds up, or if it does, we'll, um, in the next week or so, I'll bring them in, give them a five and one, pull the dryers out. Um, yeah, all that lovely stuff. So uh, yeah, that'll be it for this video. Gotta go home, feed the dogs. Um, and then yeah, start editing this for you guys. So thanks very much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and we will catch you in the next one. See ya.